This module is about Unix history. Unix began life in the early 70s in the Bell Laboratories, which were at the time owned by AT&T. It evolved from another operating system called Multix, and I guess a, uh, Unix was seen as a unified version, if you like, of Multix. Whatever its heritage, it proved to be a very popular operating system, and many companies wished to have and develop a version of it. So the source code for the operating system was given away to such organisations like universities, the government and other research institutions and some corporations in fact and each company then set off to further develop each version of that particular source code for its own purposes. It wasn't long before many large computer vendors were all selling slightly different versions of Unix. Each one was optimised to run on the particular type of computer that they were selling. It worked something like this. These co computer manufacturers were selling their own impressive and expensive hardware, but they needed an operating system that would run on their hardware. And an alternative to developing one of their own was to simply take the Unix source code and modify it in such a way that Unix would run on their own computer. They could then sell the package of computer and operating system together in one bundle. They each like to advertise theirs as being the best Unix, if you like, and certainly the best hardware. It's interesting to note that at this stage even Microsoft got involved and produced a version of Unix that would run on a personal computer. On a 286, I think, was the first computer that would run uh, Unix, and they called it Xenix. They don't have Xenix anymore. They sold Xenix to the Santa Cruz organization, who are known as SCO who rebadged it as SCO Xenix and then evolved it into another package called SCO Unix. Now, a problem started to evolve. These diverging versions of Unix quickly started to get away from each other in terms of what they would and would not do. They all called themselves Unix, but they were seldom able to interoperate. Clearly, something needed to be done. And something was done. In 1987, AT&T got together with Sun Microsystems, who respectively marketed the two most popular versions of Unix, which is System 5 Unix and BSD Unix. BSD stands for Berkeley System Distribution. And they essentially took all of the features of both products and combined them into one greater product called System 5 Release 4. This was then supposed to be the new standard of Unix that the entire world would adopt. However, it didn't really work out that way. The rest of the players in the Unix market thought that that was a little bit, say, monopolistic, so they decided to band together and form another version of Unix, which they were then hoping would become the world standard, and they called theirs OSF1. They called it OSF1 because they were the Open Software Foundation. Their aim was to make all the technology in Unix standard and open so that all versions of Unix from, the f from then on could interoperate quite easily. So we had two competing standards and it was getting out of control. In the meantime, Microsoft was uh, releasing Windows NT and gaining market share in the server operating market and naturally there was only one version of Windows NT. This was one of several factors that enabled Windows and Microsoft to gain market share in the server marketplace. Another was that it was uh, Microsoft's own brand, which is quite powerful these days, and another was that it would run on the Intel x86 PC architecture, which is a very cheap hardware platform. Anyway, to again create a sense of unity in the Unix marketplace, an organisation called XOpen started issuing a set of open standards that all Unixes should adhere to. Naturally, the Unixes did not have to adhere to these standards, but the more they did, the more they could advertise themselves as being part of the new open standard and thus more marketable product. That effort has been moderately successful and continues to this day. 
A couple of other interesting points that happened. In 1993, AT&T sold what they called the official Unix business, the Unix trademark, to Novell, who then sold it to XOpen. XOpen are now known as the Open Group. So they are the trademark holders on the word Unix. Another interesting event that occurred was that uh, a fellow called Linus Torvalds created a version of Unix that had two very important features. The first was that it would run on a PC. The second was it was completely free. And this was named, known as Linux, or some people pronounce it Linux. This was by no means the first version of Unix that would run on a PC. Microsoft came out with that, with Xenix, and there had been many versions of Unix developed in the interim that would also run on PCs, the most notable of which was SCO Unix. However, the combination of having a piece of Unix software that would run on a PC that was completely free served to give Linux a rapidly growing market share and a certain amount of fame. These days, Linux is seen as a very real alternative to the Microsoft hegemony that exists with their Windows software. Well, that completes the history lesson. Let's move on and have a look at some more interesting facts about Unix.